like that. And then, you know, some kind of like uh, aileron or whatever. I don't want to actuate it right now. Like, hmm, like, what do you do like, in a situation like that? Well, <laughs> uh, certain situations. So I've never had like an aileron or anything. Any structural, that's considered a structural member and like very, very vital for flight. Uh, I would now, say so. <laughs> yeah, so aileron's actually on the wing, and actually, uh, in the the model that I made, um, it actually doesn't need an aileron. Uh, the aileron controls the the roll of the airplane, but it can also be controlled with the rudder too if you go fast enough. Um, so you could most likely keep the wings level, uh, but when coming into land, I'm not really sure how that would work out because usually you do need all of those to be working. So I'm not really yeah. sure. Actually, wish well, I had better. I'm having an existential crisis just thinking about it, honestly. Um, yeah. <laughs> dude, how, I, how did you even get into aviation? Is it like, do you, were you thinking like maybe you could make some money doing Uber Eats or yeah. you're know, just worried about like an impending zombie apocalypse or like what's the, you know, why did you decide to even just get started with it? Yeah, I mean, I think that's like a, a common thing. People are like, oh, you can like fly people for money. And it's like, well, not not exactly, actually, because that's like considered a like a, a carry operation. But um, you know, what I, I just wanted to start really for fun. I actually started as a kid, so I was only like 13 when I did it. I went to my mom uh, for my 12th birthday, and I was like, I want a flying lesson, and you know, like every other parent, uh, especially two parents that are like, they're deathly afraid of flying. Yeah. And, uh, and they're like, absolutely not. Of course, yeah. I was like, why don't you just play football or soccer like a normal kid? Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> like, and they, oh, like and my dad's really big into sports, so I did play baseball and stuff like that. And uh, he's like, you know, like why don't you just stay safe on the ground, you know? And you know, he's still to this day. I've been flying for twelve years, and like I'll come home, I'll tell him I was flying, and he was like, uh, why, why are you still flying? I, you know, it, it, was it safe today? Is it? I think it was windy, and I was like, you know, <laughs> it's a beautiful day, you know. Yeah. Um, but anyway. So yeah, I, I basically, I, uh, I got a flying lesson, convinced my parents like a year later. Mm -hmm. It was persistent, had to be. And uh, a year later, they got me a flying lesson uh, at a local airport. And man, I loved it. And that was pretty much like the end. I was like hooked. And there was no way that anybody uh, could convince me that, uh, you know, to do, uh, you know, to not, to not pursue a private pilot certificate. Um, yeah, and I actually wound up, you have to be 17 to be certified. So I got my certificate uh, when I was 18. Uh, I saved cool. up some money working some part-time jobs and then continued on, got a commercial pilot certificate, became a flight instructor. Now I teach people how to fly. So I really, you know, it's been a fun, like, you know, decade. I mean, I've been doing this literally half my life. You know, when yeah. I tell people, that I've been flying for 12 years, they like, they're kind of like shocked because they're like, well, you don't look that old. Yeah, what are you like, 14? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm like, well, yeah, I've been flying since I was a kid. And then they're like, what? You can do that? And I'm like, yeah, sort of. There's sort two of, flight yeah. controls. So if you really, really want it, you can make it happen. So. Exactly. Um, hey, so just real quick, everybody that's kind of joining us uh, on uh, YouTube right now, we're, John and I are just, uh, chatting for a second while we wait for people to come in. We got a couple more minutes before uh, before we get started. So everybody just settle in and uh, you know get pumped for uh, an awesome live design today. So um, well, John, uh, you know I think um, I think it's really cool that, that you can fly. I think uh, sailing is awesome too. I think those those two things are are definitely on my bucket list. I know how to sail at this point. Oh know? really? which is pretty awesome. That is and I think awesome. it's cool because it can take you some places that, you know, like you, you can't really get to by car or whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. Where, have you gone anywhere like pretty crazy in your, your plane or do you usually kind of stick around Boston area or what do you like? How do you where do you go to? Yeah, I mean, I usually stick around. So I got, you know, I'm here in Waltham, Massachusetts. So I do come into the office, especially now uh, that things are opening back up, you know, now that, you know, I'm fully vaccinated, stuff like that. So, uh, you know. I like to just kind of fly around, um, but I do like Cape Cod. So like I, I'll go to like Nantucket um, typically, which would take like four to five hours uh, at least, um, you know, to get to by car and then by ferry it takes about a half hour in an airplane. Um, I can get to Long Island, which is a five hour or six hour drive in about 35 minutes. Nice. So, 
I do I do stuff like that. Go up to Maine, uh, and then you get into these like like you said, Mark, like these places where like you can't really get access to otherwise. You get to go to small airports, um, and you know it's kind of like always like a mom and pop community. Um, you can go on hikes and then get back in the plane, and and so it, you know it's fun to just explore that way. But I have gone. Uh, to like Detroit and stuff like that. And I'm flying out to Oshkosh uh, in Wisconsin this year, which is like the world's largest air show. So that'll be fun. Dude, this will be so cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thanks, John. Um, thanks for being here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start us off real quick, and then I'm just okay. going to hand it right back over to you. But right. um, thank you, everyone, for, for joining us today for another live design. Um, we got a really exciting one today. I'm Mark Peterson. I'm an industry process consultant here at – SolidWorks and um, and uh, you know we just uh, really excited to have everybody here for the live design. Um, you know, engage with us in the chat. John and I are kind of just talking about his background in, in aviation, and um, I don't know what's what's the question I can ask. Uh, you know, let's say uh, have, has anybody out there been on like a like a kind of a smaller plane? Um, you know, not like a just big commercial plane, but like a smaller plane. And if so, like where did you go? So uh, you know. You know, chat with us uh, in the chat. Let us know where you're from, and let's uh, l let me know if you've been in like a Cessna or something kind of like smaller, because those are pretty cool planes to be in. And I, I know John's gonna uh, kind of show us maybe a little bit of what it's like to be uh, in one of those planes today. So, uh, without further ado, let me introduce John Martirano. Um, he's also an industry process consultant here at SolidWorks. We work on the same team together. Um, we have a great time uh, developing content for the SolidWorks brand here um, at Dassault System. Uh, you may know John from exploring 3D Experience Works, uh, which is uh, also another show that we do here at SolidWorks Live. Uh, you know, 11 a.m. is on on Thursday. Uh, he's an avid aviator. He's got his commercial license, um, and so uh, we're just super excited to see what John has for us today. So, uh, thanks for for joining us today, John. And uh, you know, let us know what you have for us today. Yeah, well, uh, thanks so much for for having me. Um, and uh, Mark, is there a way that you can kind of confirm that? Uh, can everybody see uh, my screen at the moment? Right, I would assume that's. Yeah, I think everybody can see your screen. Okay, that's good. All right, so yeah, as you can see on the screen, it says uh, designs that fly, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. And you're like, wait, we're gonna model a plane? Well, not not a full scale model, but. We can model, uh, you know, the second best thing, which is just that, a, a smaller version, a scaled down version of a model airplane. Um, you know, uh, let me pull up my slides here. Um, but yeah, so just a quick introduction to kind of go through what we'll be talking about. So I'll be using a couple of tools on the uh, the 3D Experience Works portfolio, it really covers a, a wide array of uh, things from design and engineering, that sort of thing. And we'll be focusing on the design and engineering. So I'll be using 3D Sculptor, which is a subdivision modeling tool, which is entirely in the browser. Uh, so no downloads or installs. And with this, we'll be actually designing the fuselage, which is the body of our airplane. You kind of see the picture. And then maybe we'll talk about some ways that um, we export the model actually did export this and uh, printed it out um, with the ShopBot programmer. And uh, you get to see that in a little bit as well. Then we'll uh, jump in and we'll do some parametric modeling in 3D Creator. So this is the same thing. We're not leaving our browser today. We'll design the wing. We're gonna take a look at some multi-body part modeling and how it's a little bit different than maybe something you've seen in SolidWorks. Um, and then finally, some assembly modeling. Um, of course, that kind of wraps up the, I want to say, uh, the CAD portion of it, right? Um, but we're actually going to fly this thing. So I have a couple different uh, videos. One is the CNC of the uh, fuselage. I went in uh, to the Fab Lab here in Waltham and actually uh, put together uh, pieces of foam uh, like this and uh, actually actually cut it out and uh, fabricated this thing. And then there's a video of it flying as well. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, John, let me um, just uh, go to the chat here real quick because it looks sure. like a lot of people are chiming in. We got people from all over the place, uh, Puebla, Mexico, and um, we got people from uh, Argentina. Let's see, who's from Argentina's All Works user group. 
thanks guys for being here. Uh, Saqib from Palestine. Um, hope I'm pronouncing that right. I apologize if I botched it. Uh, Sanket says that uh, I guess he's flown an, an ATR 72 OP. Is that a is that a plane, John? I don't know. I have not flown an ATR. <laughs> okay. What is is it? But that's like a plane version. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's like a it's like a, a twin a high wing twin. It kind of looks like the model on screen, sort of. So. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. We got Sebastian from Mexico. Hey, Sebastian. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah. So uh, looks like uh, looks like uh, we got people from all over and. Uh, flying in a bunch of different places. So, um, so cool. Well, all right, sorry to interrupt, John. I just wanted to go to the chat real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome, everybody. And you know, just a little background, like what inspired me. Obviously, we did have that conversation, if you, if you caught that uh, a little bit before the session actually started. I'm a pilot. Uh, so that's kind of what, like, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to use these two tools to actually produce something that flies, given my background. So here's just a video of me last weekend, of course, repping that SolidWorks gear, actually flying the airplane. This video in particular, I'm actually trying to get, like, a screenshot for, like, the marketing to promote this. So I just threw the whole video in here, figured that was kind of fun, uh, fun to show. But, um, yeah, so anyway, we have lots to do, so let's just get to work, shall we? Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to now pull up a, a browser. I'm just going to start a new component. And uh, we can just call this, uh, I want to put it in my appropriate, uh, I want to put it in my appropriate uh, space here. Uh, yeah, and I'll, we'll call it um, Fun Flying. I don't know, we can really name it anything today really just starting from scratch. All right, so it's, so X-Shape is a parametric modeling uh, tool. So you could see the tools in the, the bottom we get, uh, we don't start with a sketch, we actually just start with kind of like this digital hunk of clay. So I'm actually uh, just going to start out with this box right here. And each of these lines that you see coming around are loops. And, you know, with these loops, less is really more. So I'm actually shrinking them down a little bit. And, you know, I'm just actually starting to even just kind of push and pull and shape my model uh, into place. So to kind of get an idea of what I want to do first, I want to do this side profile. So I'll come, uh, come in front and I'll use these four loops to my advantage. So you can window select any of these loops and actually, you know, just drag them into place. So I'm going to drag this one down a little bit. Um, say I want to move these over. That kind of makes the hood of my model. And then I'll grab the back end. We'll drag these out. And then I can also scale. So I'm going to scale these, make these a little bit thinner. And I'll drag it up a little bit. I think that's what the side profile of a plane should look like. Now, again, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. And as you see, I can kind of pan to the side here and, whoa, it looks pretty flat, right? <laughs> yeah, looks like a tapeworm or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not something that uh, would fly. So I can scale this in this oh, direction as well. That looks awesome. Yeah. And then next, I'm going to use symmetry. So symmetry is just basically uh, this line. You can see the green line that's around the model. So any faces that I push on this side will be reflected on the other side. It's pretty simple. And what I want to do is actually uh, crease these edges. So not everything. Uh, we don't want soft curvature in absolutely everything. We want some sharp edges. Um, and that's exactly what we're going for here. So I'll actually crease my edges. And you know what? I think that looks just a little bit too boxy. So it's OK. I could actually, I could actually tone it down and change the percentage of my crease to something that I think uh, looks, looks good. So you can kind of see it's coming along so far. Let's yeah, go it's ahead. taking shape really nicely. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll crease this edge back here move it in because we're obviously as you get to, to the back section of the airplane we want that nice taper mm -hmm. taper look to it so as you can see i mean i'm not you know putting too much effort into this um and it's just less is more as you can probably see so if i crease these edges we kind of get sort of this look that um it kind of is looking like the fuselage that we set out to create pretty quickly 
maybe I can add a couple more touches. Uh, I'd say I'd, I'd like this to be a windshield here. Um, and if I come to a side view, it looks pretty vertical, so I can also select individual nodes. Give that a little bit of a slant. Maybe make a few smaller adjustments. Up top here is where my wing is going to be. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, maybe yeah, I'll. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I think this is really cool. You know, we've seen, we've shown off some of this technology before, and I know a lot of times in, you know, these uh, live designs we show off like SolidWorks. Um, but you know, we're we're showing a lot of different software here on live design. Last time we showed um, uh, Draft Site, for example. So. I think this is really neat because if you try to do this in SOLIDWORKS, you could you could do it, but here it's just it's very fluid. Like you just kind of grab points and kind of move them around, manipulate them. So this is like right. a really great way to design something like this. Right. I mean, and right away we already created the fuselage. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. We can uh, exit out and it and it's a surface for us, and it looks. I think it looks exactly how we want it to be so far. And the best part is I can always go back in and make changes, and you'll see that in in a minute. Um, but the next thing I want to do, obviously, we need a wing on this thing, right? That's pretty basic. That's how planes so, fly, I think. I, yeah, I think they need those. I'm not not sure, but uh, so what I'm going to do uh, is actually I want to make these all separate bodies because if I'm going to print these, I want them all kind of laid out separately on the printing bed. Um, so what I can do is actually create what's called uh, an order geometric set. Um, and this order geometrical set, although it's a kind of a tongue twister, it's just sort of a, a separate body um, that I can work with. And there's a, 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 a certain number of advantages that we'll definitely talk about um, that kind of sets them apart from just being a separate body folder, but we'll get into that. So for now, I'm working in this new order geometrical set, and I'll start a sketch to draw the side profile of the wing. Now, for those who don't know about this, uh, the side profile of the wing, it's called an airfoil, and its shape is actually pretty important uh, to some of the aerodynamic characteristics that uh, it will have in flight. So I actually went on the NASA website, um, the NACA, which is NACA or NACA airfoil, um, and I actually am just going to insert a sketch that I already drew. So that's one of the new features that we have, um, which is pretty cool. So obviously we get a lot of results. I could just search, and then this is the one that I want. Now uh, it's gonna import the sketch. It'll put, import all the sketches if, if there were uh, some sketches, but there's actually only one. Um, so we could just start the insert and we get a nice preview, which um, we see um, looks pretty good. Um, and on second thought, this actually brings attention to a mistake that I already made, which is you could see this wing is like way too big. Well, mm. that's not necessarily a big deal at all. Um, what I'm going to do is go back into this subdivision surface. And a lot of people have questions about how exact is X shape. Well, I think it's pretty cool that I can control all of my dimensions that I want, and I can also scale non-uniform. So if I have dimensions in mind and I have a look that I'm going for, I can, you know, kind of take the best of both worlds. So I'd say along the, uh, let's see, we'll go for, hmm, looks like, yeah, we'll do 2.75. inches and Bear with me here, it'll look a little little thick this way. Um, 1.8 inches that way and uh, let's see, let's see how 12 and a half looks. Boom. Hey, that looks yeah. nice. Yeah, so it still has that same, same look to it. Um, now it'll just be a, a similar size for what I'm looking for. Um, and I can edit that new order geometrical set, jump back in and create a new sketch and kind of pick up where we left off. Okay. So like this, so this sketch thing is pretty cool because it's like you can sort of reuse stuff. You know, maybe if you have a, a profile or something that you use a lot, um, you know, for work, you know, daily or weekly. Exactly. Kind of like store it and then you can just reuse it. 
It's like a, yeah. almost like a library part or something. Exactly. And uh, I, I could think of this too, like if you had multiple shapes, um, I just picked a, a random airfoil number uh, mm -hmm. off, of the, off of the website, but there are so many different shapes that, uh, you know, this is just one of the shape for an air, asymmetrical uh, airfoil. So there's, there's like literally uh, hundreds of these shapes and you could definitely just have have a part or like a, a library basically of all these shapes that if you're going to be reusing them you might as well uh yeah and then all i need to do to get it to fully define is just uh basically put one relation and tell it where i want it to be and uh, it is completely defined but you'll notice that um it doesn't look like it lines up perfectly back there and we'll fix that in a little bit but for now, I think I'm happy with that sketch. And I could extrude this out, but it would actually end up being pretty flat. And uh, I'll use, uh, you know, 3D play here to kind of uh, demonstrate why we might not want that. So here is the model and it's extruded flat. Mm -hmm. And this is just a, a viewing app. I can make annotations here. And uh, so the model is flat about this uh, lateral axis. And I'm actually going to uh, use a sweep so I can create what's called dihedral. Uh, and this makes the airplane a little bit more st stable. It's this V shape that I'm actually going to make the airplane about. And obviously, this is super um, like dramatic. It's not going to be this much of an angle. But uh, it just actually creates stability. Um, and how so? Well, if the lift acts perpendicular to the uh, actual wing oh, itself, yeah. you can see these two converging arrows will help keep it upright. So if it gets hit by a little bit of a, a bump of, uh, you know, a little bit of turbulence, <laughs> um, and it'll it'll stay upright, at least in theory. So. That's cool. All right. So instead of just extruding it flat across the top of your fuselage, you're going to actually just kind of give them a bit of an angle. Yeah, I'm going cool. to uh, create a now I'm going to create a, a sweep. So I'll, I'll again, same thing, just picking uh, any sort of a sketch plane here. And I want just a reference line. That is horizontal and just kind of picking something out like this for now. Then I'll dimension it. Yeah, but here in the chat says six to fifteen degrees is about right. Is that is that what you're thinking? Um, so yeah, six to fifteen degrees. Uh, it it could it does change um, as you like. This isn't like a uh, a perfectly scale model, if you will. This is just a uh, it's a smaller model. So actually, I opted for about two degrees, and okay. you'll see it looks about right. But on a real plane, it would be like yeah, that's that's yeah. Dramatic. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, but again, it still looks roughly the the same. Um, so here, I could go in and we'll do yeah, two degrees. Nice. Yeah, and this into some construction geometry, and I think that one looks good too. So now, when I go in, and you might notice, well, how do I extrude this now? Well, that's because I'm still in x shape so it's a quick quick fix we just click the x key on our keyboard and you're not really going to notice much of a change you can see in the bottom right hand corner it says transition successful and now the only thing that's changed is just the tools mark in the bottom now i got x design features which uh are similar to parametric modeling features okay so, yeah yeah this is cool because you didn't i mean you didn't have to like start over or do anything like that it just kind of the yeah. UI around what you were modeling just sort of updated for you. Exactly. And then I can select my profile here and I select an extrude. And I'm like, well, you see, it doesn't exactly follow the line here. So what, what gives? Well, we have a super feature, so I can also just change that to a sweep pretty easily. Nice. Change that to a normal constant. And boom, we have half the wing, uh, or at least one wing. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think I think we're looking pretty good. So I selected normal constant so we don't get any like uh, bend at the end. It just stays straight up and down. But uh, I don't know too many planes that fly with just one wing, Mark. Uh, Not very well. 
Yeah. Not, very, not for a very long time either. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just mirror them to the other side. So and again, this is just the easiest way that I, I found uh, I could do it. And voila, we have we have a wing. Very cool. Yeah. Well, just just real quick for people that are just just showing up, um, you know, John is in the in the process of de designing this uh, kind of like RC plane, I guess, right? Like an RC type yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it is an RC plane. Yeah, and so um, you know, we're just using a, a couple of different technologies on the three D experience platform, three uh, D creator, three D sculptor, um, to you know sort of shape these components and uh, get them ready for fabrication. So we're gonna look at that in just a little bit. Thanks for everybody that's joining us today. Um, I do see some uh, some <laughs> so Mr. Mike Puckett here, who's uh, in charge of certifications for SolidWorks, is saying that we may or may not be working on a 3D sculptor hands-on exam for later this year. So uh, <laughs> I like the ambiguity there, but yeah, I think that would be great. We could we could all be certified on uh, on uh, some of these uh, browser-based uh, powerful CAD tools as well. So pretty pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly took all my SolidWorks certifications, so I think something like that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, so we've created the wing, and what's cool, the um, the OGS, we could hide that, and we could see that we're left uh, with, with, with just the fuselage here. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show it. And again, we can come back, and I can see here that uh, it's not perfectly aligned. One of the benefits of the OGS is that I can actually... Um, go ahead and edit the subdivision again. Nice. So you gotta and, always go back to that. Yeah, and you can see that it's 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 back here. But here's the thing: my OGS, even though I created it after, it's not order dependent here. It's hmm. just I still have it to reference because actually I drew this sketch, and that is exactly what I needed it to be. It's actually three inches uh, the cord length, so the the width of the wing is three inches. Um, so that's what I need, obviously, my surface to be that I'm mounting the wing to. So I could drag it pretty much uh, right to the edge there. And, wow. you know, it'll look good. And then it um, basically good as new. And we're that's, all set. that's so that's so awesome. I mean, like if, if you were doing this in, you know, some, you know, legacy CAD products, sometimes if you sort of rolled up like that to go back to something you did previously, you wouldn't be able to see any of those new features. So here you have the reference of the newer features that you were creating because of this uh, this OGS uh, function. Exactly, exactly. Wow. And now what you'll see here is I am actually um, editing in the design features, so which is uh, basically the OGS that has the fuselage in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the wing is actually, uh, I'm not editing that right now. And actually what I'm going to do is... I uh, use a combined feature, which again, I'm going to have to hit the X key on my keyboard to get back into X design, but it's not like it's that painful. Um, and I'm going to go in and grab, um, I'm going to do a combined feature. So I can actually use this as one of my tools to cut through this body. Um, and why do I want to do that? Well, you could see that it overlaps here and it, it doesn't actually, uh, I could I could hand shave it. Um, but like, why not just print it? So, um, and I can use my OGS, uh, to actually cut away the body and, um, we are, let me see here. Oh, that's why it's not roll back. Okay. So we'll do that. Um, we'll grab our OGS here and we'll use our wing to actually cut away the material. And now I can hide the OGS, and you can see oh, that wow. we have created uh, basically a, a perfect cutout where that wing will fit. So now okay. I know that that's taken care of. I don't need to worry about that at a later time. And what we're actually going to do is hide the wing because we won't need it for a little bit. So that's perfect for gluing that wing on top after everything is uh, like, you know, milled out or whatever, right? Yeah, and I, I just basically used Elmer's wood glue. <laughs> nice. It's like a water-based glue uh, that that won't eat away at the 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 foam board that I got. Very cool. Uh, yeah. All right. So 
what we want to do, um, I'm actually, I did put servos in this thing and actually flew it. So a solid block just simply won't do. So I'm actually going to have to um, split this guy into two halves, really. So to do this, you can create like any sort of parting line that you wanted to. Um, and I just kind of, for today, I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, something like that that'll work and again you could define it um that would definitely be best practice but just for time's sake we're just gonna go ahead and now split our component into two halves so here's my body so now we'll have a nice split line oh you got a train near you mark <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I never heard that before. So of course it's gonna. You're gonna <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I mean, there's a tornado and a train and a bunch of other stuff happening right now. As soon as you go live on uh, on YouTube, of course. Of course, yeah. And they heard they heard we were talking about planes, and they had to. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> now that I have the upper half and this lower half, um, I can. I'm actually gonna split this into two more. Uh, OGS is so I can just hit the make body command in the pop up that I get. And what's pretty cool here is actually that an OGS can also just make a linked copy of the body. So you can see here that you have this little link, and this just means that any change that I end up making to the knit surface or the subdivision surface will be reflected. Um, but right now it's a perfect copy of what we have so far. So I can just go ahead and hide uh, the design features up top, the original copy, and I can specifically only work with the copies that I just made. Um, so we got upper and lower. We'll just keep the terminology here simple. So I'll go ahead and hide the upper. We wanna work in the lower half here. And the first thing that I want to do is shell it out because it'd be pretty inefficient just to, you know, and we're trying to keep this thing underweight. My goal was like roughly two ounces uh, with everything. So uh, we got to shell this thing out. Yeah, that's a good idea. You don't want just a giant block of, of any material. Trying to fly that would be way too hard. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so what I'm actually going to do first is... Um, if you notice the dorsal fin at the end of the plane, there's like, uh, you know, the vertical and horizontal stabilizers of the airplane. Um, I'm actually made it made flight controls uh, that kind of stake into the foam. So I don't want to I don't want to um, actually uh, cut away any of that or shell out any of that material down there. And I do want to shell out some faces here. So I think that looks pretty good. And Although it kind of looks like a canoe, this is actually what we're going for. And because, that looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so nice and lightweight now. And obviously because the, the wall thickness is only a millimeter and a half, um, we need to add some ribs. So we can do that very easily. I'm actually going to select uh, this face right here to draw a sketch so we can, you know, create a couple ribs. So... You could really go about this any particular way. And again, we're not going to get like too crazy uh, into it. But there's, a, you know, a bunch of different ways. So I could draw a couple different lines here. Maybe I want this to be, um, let's see, maybe an inch, an inch apart, something like that. And maybe this one will be an inch apart from that one. Or I could make it two inches from the, the origin. It doesn't really matter. And then I can just uh, duplicate all that I just did to the other side. And then I'm like, well, that, that just kind of looks silly. Um, well, it's not that big of a deal. I can go maybe 1.5. It'll change the other one. And we'll try 1.5, see how that works. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So these ribs are just uh, members that go across to like in, in like increase the strength of of the of the body, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean okay. a, a millimeter uh, for foam, like it's actually like it's very like you can really bend it, and you know we want to be light, but we also don't want this thing to like you know break just yeah by flying. So <laughs> um, so now let's go ahead and add those ribs.
All right. So it'll take it uh, just a second to propagate all of the ribs. I am asking a lot of it at the moment. Um, and let's see, maybe we want a quarter inch thickness. And there we go. So we could also, if we wanted to add some draft, maybe we wanna add like, um, just so you can all see it, I'll add five degrees of draft for now. And it looks like obviously way too much over designed, a little bit too chunky. So maybe we'll settle somewhere like three. Yeah, this is really important, especially if you're going to do like injection molding or something like that. Like this makes it so that this can actually be pulled out of the mold. But exactly. even even if you're going to mill it, you know, it, this can also you know be sometimes helpful depending exactly. on the quality of the tool that you're using. Exactly. So I like I like my ribs. I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing that I want to do is just to add maybe some fillets here. Um, I think I think that's pretty much it. So I could select edges. That might take a little while. So I'll opt to just select faces, really. And uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, are there any questions from the uh, the chat right now? Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look. So we got a lot of people in here. Um, don't see. Uh, let's see. There are some questions. I did see one here. Hold on just a second. Um, I know Brad was asking about different tail designs. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I had highlighted it, but let me find it here again. Uh, geez, where is it? It was just here a second ago. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, here it is. What's up? Brad says, what's up with the different tail designs, like Bonanza V-tail or the Mooney backwards tail? Yeah, yeah. So there are all sorts of different types of uh, uh, tail designs in the 50s. The Beechcraft Bonanza, which is a Textron company, um, they designed this like V-tail. It comes out of the airplane like this, um, and it uses a combination of the control surfaces to do the same exact thing um, that a traditional uh, tail surface um, does. It's really all dependent upon the design. I think their idea uh, was to uh, maybe make it a little bit faster, um, you know, and reduce some of the surface area that would basically be exposed to the wind. Um, but overall, it's a very successful airplane for the most part, had a few issues. Um, but yeah, I just opted to choose a, a conventional tail because it's a little bit easier. Um, it it won't fly as fast either. So, <laughs> and that's, we're going for really slow here because I, I may be a pilot, I, I'm not an RC pilot, so. Yeah, those are, com those are completely different <laughs> yeah. skill sets right there, yeah. Yeah, they really are. Um, so now we can bring in and show the upper half. Um, and again, I think you guys all get the idea. We did it with the lower half, so we don't, I did the same exact thing with the upper half. And I'll show the wing. And it's coming along. Obviously, those last few steps, you don't really notice a difference, but they really are necessary. And the last thing, uh, things that we're going to be looking at really are some of the uh, the assembly. So what does an assembly look like? And um, really, I'm just to add what I want, the vertical stabilizer first, I guess. I'll just search uh, for what I want. And I can just drag and drop it into the assembly. I could insert a certain number of instances. I could open it up separately, but in this case, I'm just going to insert it. And, um, you know, I actually designed this one pretty much in context of the assembly of a different component um, and then actually save them out. So what okay. does that tell you? That tells you that X design is pretty accurate because if you look, it looks like it fits perfectly already, and I've done absolutely nothing to it. Yeah, I was about to say, how did it just get, like find itself like in the you know exact right place? I was like, how did it do that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's because so the last time uh, when I was going through and making this, I was like, well, I have a certain amount of time to present content, and I didn't want to be uh, you know reiterate kind of creating these control surfaces. So I was like, okay, well, let's show. Um, let's show everybody what it's like to assemble something in in x design and i just actually created this in context of the assembly using the origin of the model right here 
Um, so as you can see, it's it's pretty much spot on. Um, and I kept that origin. So the origin is not around this guy. Um, if I if I float the component and move it up, um, oh, there we go. Actually, I have the planes uh, saved as hidden as well. So if I go in and actually show the planes individually, you can see them pop up. So you could see these guys are pretty much right on top of each other. So what does that tell you? If I add constraints, coincident mates uh, to these planes that I could probably produce pretty much the, the same exact thing and get this uh, actually to be in the proper place. Okay, but you know, if, if you didn't have planes that were like already exactly in the right place, you could still get this tail to, to sit in the right location in your assembly? Yeah, absolutely, so okay. I'll do that right now. So applying continue um, keeps the, the dialog box open, which is pretty helpful. I can, I'll select this face for this one um and this face and you could see that it, it works go, yeah. the same. so faces edges i mean anything i just use planes this is just how i did it um it's really I know how much you like planes john yeah <laughs> yeah see <laughs> it's all about planes so yeah. we got we got most of that there that's looking pretty good um we want to do the same exact thing this time with the horizontal stabilizer yeah while you're bringing that in uh we've got eric Beatty here uh always Glad to have you here, Eric. I think he's been on just about every one of our live designs, but yeah. um, he, he said that uh, John says he likes his ribs at three degrees. Me, I like my ribs slow cooked over a charcoal grill. <laughs> I like those ribs too. <laughs> yeah. Ew. Um, cool. But yeah, so basically we're doing the, the same exact thing um, as before. And because of the design intent, and this kind of comes back to design intent of like how I thought about maybe how I would want to uh, create this, even reproduce it in the future, um, it's it, the same thing goes. I just created it in context, the assembly. And, you know, I think that that looks pretty good. I can add, oh, I need to add one more mate. So I got another question about, you know, since we're talking about the degrees on the, the, the wing and that sort of thing, Jan was asking earlier about, you know, uh, in SOLIDWORKS, we can do like configurations. You could maybe you could do a, a design that's at three degrees, one that's at five degrees. These browser based tools like they, they have that that capability as well. You definitely could do multiple iterations. That is definitely an option. Uh, this is just the way I guess I chose to do it. Um, yeah, so. Oh yeah, and then yeah, you yeah, you said like iteration. So you could actually like um because of the three D experience platform, you can do uh like branching and stuff. So you yep. can even you could do branch revisions. Yeah, so you wouldn't even have to do necessarily configurations. You can just try, you know, whole different pathways for different plane designs altogether. And then exactly. when you when you and your team get together and you collaborate and all that, and then you can decide, you know, well, we want to go in this direction, you can merge them all back into one design stream and go from there and all that history is like uh, recorded too absolutely yeah. yeah yep so yeah so i kind of took the perspective of like the the fun hobbyist today um but you know if this was somebody um that actually wanted to to make these and mass produce these i think you'd want to probably go that route uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah great question jan thanks yeah that was a great question um okay so quick uh tip you know you could hit the v key i could toggle off things that i don't want to look at maybe i don't want to look at any more sketches or really anything i just want to see model see the model here um bring it into focus and the last thing that i need to do i mean the model that i showed is red so let's go ahead and just make it red so then come down um and what's new to fd's uh to the to the latest release i guess to to x design is um, we added some cover materials, actually like over 400 of them in addition uh, to what we had previously. So we'll definitely go ahead and use one of those. So I'd say, uh, I'll just search plastic. And I'm looking for kind of like something with a shine to it. So maybe a high gloss plastic and just as we promised red. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that in there. and. Um, you know, for you SOLIDWORKS users, it looks pretty similar. Uh, so you could drag it at the, the face level. I could um, add the feature. Um, we could go the entire OGS or the, the entire set of features that we're working with, or we could do uh, fun flying, which is the name of the component. 
So this, so this is applying a material like a plastic. Is it adjusting like sort of the weight properties and you know things like that for like simulation or what is it? So doing? I could do that, right? So I could actually add um, both, but this one I just opted. I'm just going for a look here. Okay. I already know what my material is. Um, I didn't run this through any simulations or anything, which I totally could have um, run yeah. this through like an aerodynamic simulation to maybe uh, look at a pressure chart or um, anything that would tell me that this thing wouldn't fly. Um, so this just kind this, of breaks it out between like the, the physical material. Right. That's exactly right. Hmm. Let's see. Older, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, I kind of lost you there for a second, not going to lie. But yes, you are correct. It's just okay. the, uh, yeah, it's just the, uh, it's not affecting the physical properties as well. We do have that up in, in the folder here. Um, but anyway, so that that pretty much concludes the, the design. There were a couple other things that I did do, um, like added a box for the battery and stuff like that, um, that I just, you know, uh, stuff that uh, I kind of already went over in terms of features and functionality. Um, and, I, you know, we're looking uh, pretty good on time. So as promised, uh, if we don't have any questions in the chat, we're, we're going to get into maybe a little bit on how I how I created it. And then we're actually going to see a fly. OK, cool. Yeah. Um, so we'll go back to the chat here. Let's see. We've got um, this uh, Samia 149 Sanket. OK, Sanket says pretty much looks like a Dakota with a high wing configuration. That, does that make any sense to you, John? Yeah, Piper Dakota um, is is a really great airplane. Um, you know, it's funny. I I did get my inspiration from a Piper. Uh, personally, I, I kind of went for more of a, like a Piper Comanche look with a high wing. Um, you know, if if you guys are familiar with that, um, with like a Piper Cherokee wing. Um, so there's. There's a lot of Piper inspiration here. I like Pipers over, um, you know, you know, um, other airplanes. But high wing airplanes in terms of models are just much easier to design and a little bit more uh, stable at this scale. So <laughs> that's what uh, I, I got. Another question here from Mahir. He says, "What role in 3D experience uh, facilitates us to do rendering?" Uh, yeah, so we do have um, X Render, which, um, well, the role, that's the app. Uh, the role is, um, I guess it's kind of blanking me right now. Do you know the, the role off the top of your head, the name of the role? Oh, no, that's, yeah. Uh, I for, yeah, I forget the name of the, the role. But um, it is X Render, and yes, we could do yeah. some, some really powerful visualizations using, you know, the power of the, the cloud. Yeah. So. Yeah. And there's also there's also visualize uh, solvers visualize that's uh, connected to the cloud as well. So yep. if you're you know somebody that's coming from you know a background of already using that product, you know you can just connect it to the three D experience. Yeah, nice. Um, let's see. Hmm. Is it uh is the connection issue on my end? It very well could be. I'm in the office. There's a lot of people in the office now. Oh. I don't know. I think I think everything's good. Oh, here oh. we go. Uh Jordan has uh, chimed in for us to to bail us out. Um he says the role is the 3D render app. Or sorry, the role is 3D render, the app is called X Studio. Yeah, we got him. 3D render X Studio. Oh, that's what it's. Yeah, okay. So I was kind of combining the two. Oh, um, Mike Sandy would be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that that really is the design portion. So if uh, there really are no other questions, then I'll go ahead and uh, bring back up the uh, the PowerPoint. To, obviously, I'd love to fly it in here, but the room's not quite big enough for it. So. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Let's let's take a look. Yeah, let's see. All right, so up first uh, was creating the model. 
Um, so as you can see here, here's a little bit of closer of a look. Um, the actually, um, I brought this to a ShopBot programmer. It's here in the Fab Lab. Um, so a special shout out to uh, Spencer, who is in the Fab Lab, um, really helped me and taught me how to how to use this. But it's actually it's pretty easy. I just printed an STL file, or I uh, exported an STL file, uh, saved it locally to a flash drive, and just plugged it in, and um, just got to milling this. And this cut actually took about 11 minutes. Wow. So really, really not too long. 11 minutes for a rough pass with a, with a half inch bit. And then we went around for um, kind of like a finer pass. Um, as you can, this is what you're viewing now. Um, and you can see I'm kind of like going around with a shop vac. Yeah. Uh, the, the dust collector I actually was scraping against the styrofoam. So I had to, you know, keep everybody safe and... <laughs> actually vacuum up the particles so oh but, man yeah. this is awesome yeah this looks really cool so i mean i know in the in a lot of past like live designs we've shown off uh you know how to design for 3d printing and stuff for example um and by the way anybody that wants to see uh this live design or in previous ones uh definitely check those out on our uh, youtube channel we have uh, a playlist with all those in there uh, so if you do like this uh, this style of content, you like what you're seeing here, definitely go check out our um, our YouTube uh, channel and uh, check out some of those previous live designs. But uh, this is this is great. So you're making it really just out of this foam material. Yeah, I literally made it out of the foam material. Um, and then you know, last but not least, uh, I think everybody just kind of would like to see it fly. So uh, here's a video. Now, full disclosure, it wasn't the most stable airplane in the world. Uh, <laughs> I didn't exactly do some weight and balances. Uh, I like, I kind of bent one, and here's me flying it through a tree. Um, and it actually came out the other side and still kept flying. So, I mean, it did fly. <laughs> um, you know, it had, obviously, it only really turned to the left, and that's because I bent one of the control surfaces. Um, but it was going really good here, and then you know I, I did I did crash it again. Not really the model; it's really the oh. end user here. <laughs> it's really the end user here. Um, not not an RC pilot, so I don't. I think I'll uh, you know stick to my hobby of flying real airplanes and not <laughs> not the uh, the other way around. So. But that's awesome, though. I mean, it wasn't like built from a kit or anything. You you designed this and and got yep. it, you know, made and all that sort of stuff yourself. But it only turns left, so I guess you named this thing what Derek Zoolander or something like that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh... that's funny. Uh, no, I actually didn't give it a name, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Any good names? Uh, anybody think of a good name? You just throw it in the chat. I'd love to hear what everybody thinks, but. Um... Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote for Zoolander, but yeah, it, it, let's uh, let's give this plane a name, and uh, yeah, if anybody <laughs> in the chat has a, a great name for for our little plane here, definitely go for it. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was a, it was a ton of fun to make, um, and you know I would totally do it again, um, and then maybe maybe next time I would add a little bit of a a simulation component in there to see if I could improve the design in any way to actually make it fly a little better. Yeah, we got we got one suggestion from Andrew Gross. Left turn, Larry is is also a good a good choice as well. <laughs> um, so so when you put this together, so you you milled out like the the fuselage and the two different parts with the ribs yep. and everything, and then uh, and you I guess did you also mill out the the airfoil with the same material? I did not. I actually okay. went to a hobby shop and purchased the wing. Wings are something you don't really want to mess with. Oh, okay. um, I also didn't have access to the to a fine enough um, like pass over like so if you if your machine could do it then yes but um, I don't know if you saw the step downs when I when I showed the video um, they're like quarter inch step down so um, when you're looking at a side wing here the side of a wing it, it needs to be pretty precise so yeah. I opted to let somebody that has some professional manufacturing equipment just uh, do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and cool. I also bought all the electric servos. It pretty much came um, like they all came in a bag with uh, the push rods, and you just glue them into the the styrofoam. It's pretty easy. So. Oh, nice. Okay. And so I guess and there was some sort of battery or something. I assume like went with all that. Yeah. 
Yep, yeah. it's a super light little like square battery, um, and I Velcroed it to the to the belly. Oh man, yeah. that's so cool. Uh, yeah. Let's see, what are some other suggestions here? Uh, Mike Sandy says NASCAR plane is is what he's going to call it. NASCAR uh, plane. Mahir uh, likes the term fun fly. He thinks fun fly is a, a great uh, name for it. Um, yeah. Eric, Eric Beatty, uh, <laughs> Planey McPlane face. <laughs> great suggestion. Um, Jeremy Regnaris, uh, Phil, they call Phil Mickelson lefty. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's the lefty golfer. <laughs> left, left, yeah, left hand uh, golf player. Yeah. Mike Sandy suggests I'm not an ambi turner. <laughs> yeah, poor, Zoo, poor Zoolander. So, uh, so misunderstood. Misunderstood. Yeah. That's well, funny. awesome. That's 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 really amazing stuff, John. This it's just such a fun project, and like you did all this with browser-based tools. I mean, you didn't have to lug around like a big laptop, you know, to you know for full-on SolidWorks or anything like that. You were able to pull off this whole project using um, these browser-based tools. Shows like a lot of really cool, powerful features in here. So. Um, so that's awesome. Um, so let's, uh, let's kind of start wrapping it up. Thanks again, John, for, for joining us and, and doing the live design. This, this was a ton of fun. Uh, obviously you had a lot of fun doing it. Oh, you were able to create, like, <laughs> RC plane and like fly that around. So, um, so yeah, I just want to, you know, have everybody, if you, if you like this, you know, join us again next time for, uh, live design, which is going to be. July 1st, Jordan Tadich is going to be hosting us for that. Or sorry, Jordan Tadich is going to be uh, performing a live design for us. Um, but we have SolidWorks Live here every Thursday at 11 a.m. Um, so, and in fact, I think next Thursday on the 24th, John, you're going to join us again for Exploring 3D Experience Works. Is that right? We do have a, a session of Exploring 3D Experience Works. Um, we're actually going to have Brian Zias as our guest. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Brian Zeiss is our boss, and uh, we're, we'll, be, we'll be really happy to have him. He'll be showing us the good and bad of uh, team meetings um, using Lean Team Player. So we're really excited about that one. I think it, it, that's another fun, really engaging uh, session where we get the audience involved. So I think definitely check that one out. Oh, cool. So real quick for people that don't know, like what is, just, what is Lean Team Player? Like just to, just to give yeah. a brief overview. Yeah, Lean Team Player is basically, um, I, you know, the, the easiest way I could explain it is just, um, so if you have a board of sticky notes, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you can you can put up all these ideas uh, on, like, and you might do it on paper, you might have done it on paper before, except this is just a board that you can customize with several backgrounds, um, and you could share it with everybody, and you can all be in that board, uh, kind of pinpointing uh, or, like, um, like, rattling ideas off um, and everybody's contributing all live at the same exact time um, you know so and obviously you'll see so that and so much more um, yeah. but yeah so this is so, this is in the 3d experience platform like on the browser yep again all entirely browser based so no downloads to install or anything like that um, nice. so entirely cloud and that one's a lot of fun too because you can really have have a lot of fun with it. And I think you'll definitely see that in the session um, June 24th. Very cool, yeah. Awesome, man, thank you. Um, so yeah, everybody look forward to that. Um, that's next Thursday, the 24th. Um, and just, you know, again, thanks again, John, for uh, for your contribution. And, and uh, thank you. this was just a ton of fun. I also wanna thank uh, Andrew Gross, Jeremy Regnaris, and uh, Olga by there in the back end helping us out today and uh, just taking care of all the crazy stuff. I know we had a couple of like little uh, internet dropouts and, and hiccups and stuff uh, as you do with all these things. So we appreciate everybody's patience with us on that. And thank you guys in the background for, uh, you know, just uh, like sweating and struggling through all that. So we appreciate it. Um, you know, if you guys don't mind before you run out, if you really like this, you know, hit the subscribe button for us and, uh, you know, ring that bell icon. That way, uh, you know, the next, uh, you know, live design or the next three, uh, exploring 3D experience works, you'll be notified and you'll be able to, uh, you know, watch that again with us. So thanks uh, to our audience for being here. Thank you so much for your engagement in the chat. And we look forward to uh, seeing you next Thursday and uh, further Thursdays. Have a good one.